give you another minutes, please. The regular monthly meeting of the Franklin Town Board is called to order at 7.30 by Supervisor Jeff Taggart. Present were Don Smith, Lisa Hike, David Grant, Garrett Sitz, Supervisor Jeff Taggart, Deputy Highway Superintendent Jamie Archibald, and Paul Warner. Also present were Dale Downen, Brian Brock, Carla Nordstrom, William Young, Don Clunan, Nancy Clunan, Jack Law, Don Hebbard, Jean Hebbard, Elizabeth Saro, Shirley Ferguson, Ralph Sitz, Phyllis Sitz, Sonia Johns, Dale Beach, Cindy Beach, Linda Bevelacqua, Pete Bevelacqua, Cheryl Peterson, Patricia Wheelhouse, and Dwight Bruno. Also absent, or absent was Highway Superintendent Mark Lang. The minutes from the November 7th meeting were read. Don Smith made a motion to approve the minutes as read. Garrett, David Grant seconded the motion and all agreed. Don Smith, David Grant, Garrett Sitz, Dale Downen, and Jack Law were given a tour of the compressor station located in Hancock. Dale Downen, the Delaware County Public Enforcement Officer, measured the noise level of the station at the outside of the entrance to the facility. The reading of the noise level at that location was 26 decibels, which was not very loud. Jack Law indicated that the facility was well kept and was, and not, and was not excessively loud outside of the building. Residents expressed their concerns about the air pollution generated by the compressor station. Also, there are concerns about the possible level of noise because of the proposed compressor station is considerably larger than the station in Hancock. Supervisor Jeff Tanger indicated that he would be meeting with Delta engineers, architects, and land surveys to consider using their engineering services for the establishment and implement implementation of a local road protection program. Deputy Highway Superintendent Jamie Archibald, Archibald re reported for the Highway Department, the CHIPS program has been submitted. The town did not purchase the grader at the auction as it sold for more than what the town was willing to pay. Vouchers were submitted for audit and payment with no further business to come before the board. Garrett Sitz moved for adjournment at 8.30. David Grant seconded the motion and, and all agreed. Do you have any additions or corrections? Move we'll accept on the thread. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, anybody from the Kellogg Foundation on a report? Okay. Well, then I guess we'll open it up. I was able to get <coughs> Mr. Ametti here tonight to a answer some questions. Uh, we are going to have the three minute limit on whether I think. The last time there was a discussion about the question being answered on the same three minute time frame. Um, I guess we should lose some. If you're going to, if you want an answer to your question, give a little bit of time. Don't use the three minutes up. You know, ask your question and then Mr. Ametti will try to answer it as best he can. Any questions of that? Mr. Ametti is who? Mr. Mr. Ametti is our town lawyer. Thank you. Okay. Who's first? Um, Gene Marner. My name is Gene Marner. Um, I would like to uh, ask you about, I would like to talk about health impacts of, uh, of a compressor station. Compressor stations generate a lot of gases, a lot of toxic gases. It's well known all over the country. There are lots of studies. I'll give you some, uh, some paperwork I have before I finish. But I would like to, uh, <coughs> since I only have three minutes, I would like to get very quickly to the Madison County Department of Health comments that they submitted to FERC about the, con uh, not about the Constitution Pipeline, about another one up there, Dominion. And, um, and what they recommended, uh, unfortunately in Delaware County we don't have a Department of Health, but they, they apparently they did a very thorough study and uh, they suggested that, uh, that what should happen is that the county, that not the county, but that FERC should order a baseline health study to establish population health status before the compressor, compressor station is built. They also said that they should require the best practices to ensure that effective emissions control measures are kept up to date. They wanted to establish an alert system for blowdowns. I know that blowdowns often surprise people because they come roaring in the middle of the night. I think there are people here who live near compressor stations who can tell you how terrifying that is when a jet plane lands on your house in the, in, at three in the morning. Um, there should be emergency plans put in place. Now, 
um, and institute a health registry. And since all these things were recommended in Madison County, it seems to me it would be prudent if here in Delaware County we may we ask the same thing of FERC. As, I, but I don't know what agency would do it. The, the, the health department doesn't exist here. So I, I would ask you as the, uh, our supervisor, Jeff, to bring that up with the Board of Supervisors and ask that these, um, th th that these preparatory safety things for the health and safety of the people of Franklin be, be acted upon before, uh, before they, they start moving on this. Mind um, writing a letter setting forth um, what you just stated? I think I'd love to do it. Who, to whom should I address it, Jeff? Yes. Thank you. Um, Peter, Peter Hederberg. I'm from Plymouth, New York. Uh, this um, as Gene was just stating, um, there, there is quite a bit of um, evidence that um, the air pollution is very significant. So th this particular compressor station apparently has been approved or could release up to 100,000 tons of, um, of uh, uh, greenhouse gases, uh, carbon dioxide equivalent. And uh, the, the pollution is not only globally warming, but it's damaging to people's health, people who live close to these uh, compressor stations and other types of uh, transmission facilities because they're constantly leaking uh, ga various gases. In fact, that's a major function of these transmitters that they are constantly cleaning the, uh, they want to get rid of any other uh, pollute or any other gases in the uh, methane stream. So that's a major uh, function. And so people in the area are expected to suffer with their health uh, so that the gas company can just dump this gas willy-nilly into the area. And I can't see what kind of compensation any local town or local residents could receive that would anyway make up for that. It's long-term, indefinite assault on people's health. That's my, those are my comments. Excuse me, can I just pass out this fact sheet to the members of the council? Thank you. Just, I hope you will just review it and consider the, <laughs> the information that's in it. This will be also given in your letter, right? Yeah. yeah. The facts that you have there. So oh, yeah. So it's all in the letter. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Carol? Yeah, um, I just wanted to be sure that you uh, know about the DEC hearing that's going to be held in Oneonta. So there'll be one in Binghamton and in um, Cobleskill as well. And I'm wondering if you are going to be going to that and speaking to it. It's going to be, it's going to be um, related to the pipeline, the Constitution pipeline. FERC may have approved it, but the DEC has not. Right. Are you heard about it when I go to Oneonta. You plan on going to the Oneonta one? Okay, mm -hmm. fine. And I just thought I'll leave this over to you as well. Um, I, I wasn't at the last meeting, but I listened to it. And uh, is it being recorded again this month? Huh? Is it being recorded again? Yeah, yeah. Okay. it is recorded. I hope so. Yeah. Well, I would, well I, I appreciate that's fine, but I, you know, out of courtesy, and I, maybe I'm terrible, but I would think out of courtesy, everybody ought to know if they're being recorded. It's yeah. legal. I agree with that. It's all legal. I, I'm sorry. And I, I agree with that. I mean, that's fine. I don't have a problem with it being recorded, but it, I think it'd be out of courtesy. It should be told before the meeting or You're right. start of the meeting. You're right. Sorry. Okay, thank you very much. Now, um, I know that you went down to Hungry Hill, and I've been reading quite a bit about it in other newspapers. Quite a few newspapers reported on um, on a blowout there that happened, um, and I don't know if it was reported to you when you went down there. Um, well, they went down on December 2nd. Oh, no, this was last year. Oh, this this last happened year. December 10th, 2013. Uh, and I'll give you each a copy of it. One from Sutherland County Democrat, one from the Daily Star, one from Acta Paper in Ohio. Uh, and a family had to evacuate their home. And I don't know if this was told to you. Um, but th this does happen a lot. I know that you were told that it doesn't, but it does happen a lot. Do you collect all of the stuff that I have collected. You'll see that all over the countries, 
West Virginia and the South and everything, these things blow up all the time and people are evacuated from their homes. And in some cases, they're, they're killed in, in West Virginia, Williams especially, their, their compressors on their pipelines have had several explosions in the last few years that have resulted in deaths. And I'll bring those things to you too, but I didn't have much time uh, to do this, so I'm going to pass this off to you. And so we'll be seeing you. Thank you, Carol. Um, <coughs> Jean Marner had mentioned Name and address, please. Christina Turacek. I live in Lawrence, right on the border of Otego. We're about 17 or 18 miles as the crow flies. And that's why I gave you this map. Uh, air pollution can go at least 200 miles. At any rate, uh, I just wanted you to know that he, he had talked a lot about the Madison uh, County Health Department. I gave you this whole packet of information, uh, the entire uh, article, the entire comments to, per to have them there. I also had other information about air pollution <laughs> from compressors. There's two articles about Minnesink where the 9-11 responders, they went there for clean air and now they don't have it because of the compressor station there. There's some other items in there. I hope that, you know, you'll have time to read them. Thank you. And one of the things I said was, <laughs> uh, thank you for considering your neighbors, because uh, we are, and we would, we would get whatever comes from here. Thank you. Thank you. Done? Yeah. Uh, I want to thank the board for, you know, allowing us to have the privilege of the floor. And I will leave a copy of my notes when I'm done. My name is Don Hebbard. I'm a longtime resident of Franklin. And I'm here tonight with two requests for the town board. And as the governing body of the town of Franklin, I'm pretty sure the board has the authority to grant those requests if they wanted to. When the comprehensive plan was put together and passed back in October of 2006, small scale light industry and agriculture were welcomed and encouraged. Large scale heavy industry was pretty much frowned upon. I am one of many concerned citizens who that now is very upset by the energy based heavy industry companies that are kind of walking all over the town of Franklin. They're using the power of eminent domain to advance their profits, provide cheap energy to metropolitan areas. And all the while, they're, they're detracting from our property rights, the right for us to enjoy our own properties and alter our way of life. The federal government, the state of New York, and Delaware County governments all seem to believe that this is progress and that this is in the best interest of the town of Franklin. Um, I do not agree. I think several of us do not. And we would like our elected governing body, the town board, to stand up and tell them, no, it's not in our best interest, economically or health-wise. So how do, these, uh, how do these energy companies get into the small areas like Franklin? Well, they get in through a little department called the Delaware County Department of Economic Development. Their primary objective in their, in their website is to, quote, support the growth of existing businesses while encouraging the development of new small business enterprises in Delaware County. This sounds pretty good. How do they do it? Well, they provide low interest rate loans, they get grants, they set up empire zones where you, you know, can now have uh, tax-free for 10 years. They enter into pilot agreements whereby payment in lieu of taxes are used as a method of reducing the real estate property tax um, for the company that is doing the upscale. Um, and it's, it's funded partly by phase federal and state economic incentive grants, which pretty much is you know, our taxpayers' money that is being given out to businesses. Um, the Department of Economic Development does this through two things. One is the IDA, the independent, the Industrial Development Agency. The other is the ID, the LDC, the Local Development Corporation. Both of these people have um, very nice websites and very nice uh, statements of their facts, uh, and they do empower financial assistance to entities through the incentives. They can purchase, sell, lease, or mortgage real property, and they can borrow and lend money. Um, there are 
several good examples of how these benefit. Amphenol is benefiting, moving out of a floodplain, probably going to save several jobs for you know our area. Uh, Doma, which is DMV, and um, Saputo, which is Morningstar, have both benefited by getting a pre-treatment plant for their wastewater and a pipeline pumping it up to Delhi. Uh, Clark Companies is benefiting by you know expanding their sports department. All of these things mean a lot of jobs. It sounds really good, but there's one that has me really upset. And that is the IDA's involvement with the Hungry Hill Compressor Station in Hancock. Mm -hmm. IDA purchased 10 acres with an adjoining 7 acres, um, pretty much after it had been destroyed by Millennium during the construction process. They have a pilot agreement with them for 15 years, starting at 85% tax reduction, reducing 5% every year. Um, at the end, Dominion owns the facility, but probably in 15 years, it'll be depreciated down to a fraction of its original cost. How many jobs are created by that? Probably very few. You know, maybe somebody mows a lawn, plows the snow. I mean, I don't know for a fact how many people, but I believe that Dominion runs the facility. So I'm asking the town council to do two things. Number one, I'd appreciate you considering to pass a resolution opposing Delaware County Department of Economic Development from using IDA or LDC funds to finance the compressor station in Franklin. And I'm, secondly, I'm asking our town supervisor, I would appreciate it if you would c consider opposing any proposal that comes before the County Board of Supervisors from the Development um, Department of Economic Development for funding real property purchases or using it to fund the construction of a compressor station in Franklin. I thank you. I have a copy of it for you. What was your name again? Don Hebbard. Excuse me. Yeah. Ah. <clears throat> Hi. Thanks for having us. I'm Lottie Marsh. I live in Sydney. And I'd like to speak to you about the health impacts from a compressor station. Before I start, I will say that in the Constitution Pipeline um, memorandum, they stated that there would only be five jobs created in the whole 124 miles of the pipeline. So we're basically asking you not to poison us. Um, the chronic health impacts experienced by individuals living and working near compressor stations, and that's one to three miles away, is damage to liver and kidneys, damage to lungs, damage to cardiovascular system, damage to developing fetus, reproductive damage, mutagenic <coughs> impact, developmental malformations, damage to nervous system, brain impacts, leukemia, aplastic anemia, changes in blood cells, impacts to blood clotting ability. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> I do have a copy on your table of this. Yes. Uh, I'm Jason Starr. I live in Franklin and I'm just have a question for the town lawyer. Can I hear that right? Is the lawyer for the town? Yeah. Um, because I see in this brochure here February 2010, residents of Lamar County won a lawsuit against National Pipeline Company for excessive noise causing damage to health and property. I'm curious about um, what your experience might be, if you have any experience with cases by other towns. I litigated uh, as a private attorney against Millennium Pipeline in deposit with successful results, but as a town attorney, um, I haven't represented a town that's taken a specific uh, position, either for or against the pipeline. Are you familiar with? Sorry, I don't know yes. You You're familiar with this case? And I've heard sure. of it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Dale Beach. Jeff, last month I asked you what you were doing to protect us, the, the residents of Franklin. Have you got an update on anything? I've been getting more inf information. I got information against uh, the IDA 
not against them, from them, I won't say against them, about the compressor station in Hancock. And it was somewhat a different story what, than what Don's portraying. I, I th that's what I read anyway. But, I mean, I, I don't, I agree. They should not be tax breaked. If they do come, and that's an if. I, I, I asked the question about the safety of the people of Franklin. We talked about the difference of pipe thickness. I have not found out anything on that. I, I, yeah, have, I haven't got any answers on that. Now. And the other, the other thing that is it our town's responsibility to train the, the fire departments and stuff? Because this is a whole new beast that's coming to town. Well, it, it pro you're talking to train them on possibly being called to the compression station or the pipeline itself. I, I'm not, both. Both. Well, I'm sure the compression station, and Mark's part of the fire department, I hate to put, put it on him, uh, but I know the pipelines, we don't have any in Franklin right now, but I think probably some of the training has crossed lines, maybe not. Compression station could be a whole new ball game. Is that the town board's responsibility to look into that? To, to make sure that every pe person's trained? To well, I think that's a state there? requirement, I would think, more than a town board. No, town Joe, board. Go ahead. Yeah, the town board would really have nothing to do with the training of the fire department, although you raise a very good point. About evacuation routes in case of a, a, a burst in the pipe? <clears throat> yeah, these are all things that are going to be coming down the pipe. You know, don't leave your congressman out of this. You have very valid concerns that you should express to him. To my knowledge, there's been no FERC approval for this project yet, so. And he would have a lot to say about what's gonna happen. I think if you look at the uh, environmental impact statement, there is mention of training in that, safety training. Which uh, nice presumably the, the pipeline problem. company would have be responsible for doing. That's something to check into. I haven't seen it occur yet, but I would hope that you're right. Occur or offer. Yes, okay, Dale. <coughs> yes, I was wondering if the town. Name? Oh, Kathy McNulty, I live in Sydney. I was wondering if the town passed a noise ordinance right now and it became and it was on the books before any of this happened if that would be protective of the town uh, from the siting of the, the compressor station at all you could pass a noise ordinance what was that Joe I couldn't hear you the town has every right to pass a no noise ordinance, yes. Anybody else? Yes. Um, in the same, uh, my name is Kaima Nelson Bowen. I live in Franklin, the town of Franklin. <coughs> uh, in the same vein as Kathy about being prevented in action and bans, I'm concerned about the purchase, dispersal, storage of fracking waste that may come out of Pennsylvania to us. We don't have hydrofracking, uh, hopefully never, but have you have an opinion about that? Other towns in the area have taken action towards that. They've provided uh, protocols for that and something I'd like right. you to consider. It's something that brought to my attention. I have the, the paperwork here that I was gonna discuss with the, the board members. Yes, I think I think you're, you're that's a great, thing to do I think is to pass you know no fracking no waste brought into the town of Franklin I think that's it's a, it's a no-brainer I mean I can say you know Thank you. I appreciate you know I think it's something but the uh, I think it was Andy's adopted this and I think it goes my opinion goes a little bit too far it goes into fracking For, I, the, the, the waste I don't want brought here and right now, fracking is not an issue because it's banned by the state. So I think it should be just on the waste, you know, using it for road roads or anything like that. I think, yes, it would be something a town will adopt some, you know, a, a local law to that effect to ban yeah. any use of that. But it, um, it could be as an attractive source of revenue. 
Not that attractive, no. <laughs> That's my opinion. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, as I said, we haven't discussed it as a board, so I'm no, talking on my yeah. behalf, not theirs. Okay. Uh, this gentleman up here. How you doing? I'm very careful. I'm in Pennsylvania. A couple of residents here asked me to come up and speak to you guys mm -hmm. and ladies. Uh, I'm an ex gas worker. And I also live around four compressor stations around my home in Dimmick, Pennsylvania. One's a half a mile, one's one mile, two miles, and two and a half miles, which is the William Central. Every one of William's stations around my house has gone boom or been on fire in the past two and a half years to uh, Teal Station, which just went up uh, six months ago. All right. Lathrop blew up. Two of the compressors out of seven blew. It was a three-point in a Richter scale at my house. I sent the dishes off the counter, everything on the house. It was over five and a half hours before they got somebody there to do something about it because the fire department had no equipment to deal with gas in any way, shape, or form. They had no foaming equipment whatsoever, and our fire department is strictly volunteers. We had no foaming equipment. We have no specialized equipment. The guys didn't even have special equipment to even get near the station. We waited for over five hours for them to get the fire department for the uh, scranton Wilkesbury International Airport to get their equipment from there to Dimmick, Pennsylvania to put out a compressor station fire. Like I said, that was two miles from my house and it literally cracked the sheetrock in the house. That's how bad it was. The new rule of thumb now in our county, okay, if anything goes bang or anything catches on fire, all the fire trucks roll in with no lights, no sirens, nothing. Absolutely silent because they don't want anybody, the residents, to know that anything is going on. When Williams Station just caught on fire, a friend of mine, Rebecca, lives a half a mile from the station, had no idea that the station was on fire and venting gas off. At my house at night, you swear to God, you got a B-17 sitting out on a runway in front of your house because you can hear every one of these stations run all night long at the house and when they do blow offs which they do about two to three times a month it sounds like the space shuttle taking off for an hour at a time where you can't even hear yourself think i've had to leave my house in the last four years probably seven eight times a month i have to leave my home because you can't breathe because they bend it off and I li our houses are in the valley there you cannot breathe the air quality I have breathing problems, we have skin problems. There's a lot of issues going on by having these stations around you. So I mean, there's a lot of things you really need to look at seriously before you start thinking about a pressure station coming into your town or your county. Because I mean, it's, I mean, you just can't imagine how bad it is. I mean, it bothered me so bad when we try to get DEP, EPA, and everything else to turn around and do air monitoring down there for us. You could, we couldn't get our state or our government to do anything for us. University of London stepped in and they came out and they brought us all air monitors that we now have in our houses around where all the stations are in Susquehanna County. I've already pushed over 350 to 400 on air quality on that meter <coughs> sitting there in the valley, which is hazardous. You know, basically, it's time to tell you to evacuate. That's how bad the air quality is. And they'll do that maybe three or four times a month. And we download all this information, all that air monitors going to the University of London. London is more worried about our air quality than our own government is. The problem is, you know, this planet is a closed loop system. So whatever you put in the air here or put in the ground here, it eventually comes around and comes back to us. Yeah, we don't have planet B to go to. So that's something for you to really seriously stop and think about. Like I said, I am an ex-worker. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Craig Stevens, uh, sixth generation landowner in Silver Lake Township, Pennsylvania. Raised my neighbor, he's about 15 miles away. Uh, this is our hazard mitigation plan from 2012 for Susquehanna County. Let me just read you from it. Uh, my dad was a first responder in the Civil Air Patrol, this is his jacket, for 63 years, emergency first responder. 
This in this document is listed in March 2012 an explosion at a natural gas compressor station in Susquehanna County sent black smoke in the air, thus frightening residents who witnessed the event. The Springville Township explosion was caused by a small gas leak from compressor station that pressurizes gas extraction extracted from the ground. The explosion blew a hole in the roof and uh, the building and rattled homes within a half mile radius. I never saw these pictures, but until we got this document, there's the roof blown off, the walls blown out. Interior, we never saw that before. The uh, first responders in our area will tell you they show up, they should have brought uh, wire coat hangers, hot dogs, buns, and condiments, because they stand around and watch it burn. When this one blew up, seven different companies showed up from all over the area. Not one of them could put the fire out. Until they turn the valve off, you can't. Same thing if a propane tank explodes, you have to let it burn itself out. This is a joke. Matter of fact, you guys have a site, you're cited for the Constitution Pipeline. I came and spoke on that in 2012 over at Sydney Library. Why did I come? Because they tried to force a pipeline across my property and use eminent domain. Now, you just mentioned Dominion. I just heard Dominion. There's Dominion in Virginia with the new Atlantic Coast Pipeline attempting to use and they're trying to force their survey crews onto people's property by sending them a letter from the lawyers. You saw what happened with Constitution. The Attorney General is now going after them. This is what we got in Susquehanna County. We have 40 compressor stations on the books, 25 built and emitting. When you ask them what's coming out of them, they tell you it's water vapor. <laughs> Let me tell you what it is. It's benzene and toluene and any number of volatile organic compounds that well, not just by themselves are dangerous, but what do you think happens when they mix together like a chemistry set in the air? Ray didn't mention it, but down the street from his house is a high school, Elk Lake School District. It's kindergarten through eight through uh, 12th grade. There are okay. over a thousand kids, elementary through high school. And the college. They have four compressor stations surrounding them and they fracked and drilled wells within a thousand feet of the elementary side. Uh, when a community puts their own kids at risk, that's lunacy. That is complete lunacy. I have four children myself. I would never have allowed them to be at that school. I would have yanked them out and put them anywhere. I would have homeschooled them before I did anything else. The track record on the industry is abysmal. As Ray said, we had six fires and explosions at six different Williams compressor stations in a matter of about 24 months. Every three to four months, you could set your watch. We just had one a couple weeks ago to keep on that every four month explosion and fire. Deal. Why you would not, here's what I would do number one. Tonight, there's a county commissioner's uh, a planning commission meeting in Susquehanna County. They're going to approve four more stations. That'll be 36, that was 37, 38, 39, 40. Listen to me now. They're upset, Williams is, because Hartford, where they want to put one of them, has a noise ordinance. There's what you do, noise. Their noise ordinance is not at the front door of the, re of the nearest residence. It's within 25 feet of the edge of the industrial facility. 50 dB. William says they cannot ma match it. No, they can't. A mile away it's 50 dB, not 25 feet. Put something in place. Protect the citizens. Tell the DEC, no more compressor stations get built in our neighborhood until you come and do real-time monitoring. They'll tell you it's not possible, and I'll tell you I lived in California for 46 years, and every other year they stuffed a magic wand up the tailpipe of my vehicle, and it could tell you everything within .0001 that was coming out of that, every constituent coming out, and you had to control it. And if it was off, they made you pay to get it fixed. Make them do a real-time air quality monitoring at the most local facility in New York State for 90 days and plug it into a computer so you, the town board, and everybody in this room can watch what's coming out. When you see what's coming out, you'll not only not allow a new one, you'll take the pitchforks and torches over and make sure they shut down every one of them in the area. They will tell you nothing will happen. There's the list of pipeline accidents in the United States. Hundreds of major explosions, <coughs> fires, deaths occurring. The, the job of the industry is to tell us there's no problem. I'm a right-wing Tea Party conservative. I'm not a left-wing anti-drilling activist. But I know one thing. Our own constitution says we have a right to clean air and pure water in, in our constitution in Pennsylvania. It's being ignored and we're being abused by our own elected officials. Why? Every one of them are on the take. Every one of them have taken money, every one of them have ran, and every one of them are afraid of the industry. I'll tell you tonight, don't be afraid. They are out of money, out of money. They've overplayed this, and the boom is going to bust. 
And why would I let a broke company come in and build a station here? Why would anybody do that? That might not only pollute and damage and harm the residents of this beautiful community here, but also potentially explode, light on fire, and cause future problems. There, this is the gift that keeps on giving, or really the nightmare <laughs> that keeps on scaring. Don't fall for it. Find out and get every fact, and don't allow them to put anything in your neighborhood that would be harmful. It's your responsibility and your right as the leaders of this community to say what's going, what's really going on. And if you want to find out, I'll leave my card. I do tours. They're called Come and See It, Come and Drink It, and Come and Breathe It. There's a card, both cards there for everybody. And I've had uh, 20 New York State sitting senators come on our tours, over 50 assembly members. We have a group from Maryland, uh, senators and delegates coming on Monday, next Monday coming to find out, because Maryland is next. And if they think Maryland, and Virginia, where I'm living uh, half the time now, are going to fall for this. They're not. I was on the phone with the governor's aide just the other day on this uh, thing with Dominion trying to take people's property, sending them threatening letters before they even have a first scoping hearing. They're bullies. Don't allow them in your community. Don't allow them to put their mess in your community. And they'd be the same as putting a tailpipe uh, exhaust, hooking it up, and putting it in your kid's bedroom. See how long that lasts and how they feel healthy-wise. So I appreciate what I heard earlier. Do the protective measures. That's your job. Don't let anybody force anything in this community that the community doesn't want. And look at who's supporting them. When somebody's cheerleading them, always follow the money, my dad said. Because first responders are the ones that get put in harm's way. When one of these blows up and has a secondary explosion, it will kill the first responders, the heroes that will be there to protect the citizens. Don't put them at risk. These are a liability for the community. They're lying to you about what's coming out of them. Unless you find out what's coming out, you're all liable. The whole community representative here are liable if there is damaging things coming out of there. And five years from now, somebody's getting cancer and they link it back to it, it's going to be as bad as the asbestos things going on and the, and the communities, you know, on the TV, you see all the commercials for asbestos and all those things. That's what's going to happen. We're going to find out what's wrong later. Learn from our experiences. We've already had the explosions, the fires. We have 400 plus compressor stations in Pennsylvania, and our, our um, government has not done one real-time monitoring on any of them. Reverse that here. Tell them, yeah, we'll be glad to have this thing come here. As soon as you tell us exactly what's coming out and prove it by, by uh, doing a real-time monitoring. Put an air monitoring on the stack of every station. I appreciate you letting me speak, and if I can help out at all, there's my card. Dave Plants, I'm a longtime resident here in Franklin. I would gladly contribute money towards sending you people down to his place. <laughs> it's free and come on down, we encourage it. We're not there to change your mind about anything, we're there to show you what really happens when the gas industry and all their infrastructure comes to town. It's a nightmare. I'll educate you to what happens to your property and your water. And when your property, your $400,000 house, is now worth a zero. You can't even give it away. <coughs> it's, so bad, it's so bad the bank won't even foreclose on my property because I quit paying on because I got tired of it. They won't even foreclose on the property because they don't want it because it's contaminated. Okay? The industry came back and well, we'll give you 160000 and take it off your hands. I said, why would I give it to you for one hundred and sixty when it was appraised four years ago for 410000 Why would I give it? Because they just want to get rid of me. Because there's a moratorium in Dimmick, and that moratorium is still in effect. They can't drill or frack in Dimmick until they test all 19 water wells. Well, guess what? There's one place they can't get to to test the water, so therefore they can't lift that moratorium. But I won't let them back on my property. <laughs> you stay off my property. And that's the reason that moratorium is still in effect. So come on down, I'll give you a quick education. Somebody else? Cindy? Um, Cindy Beach, on December 11th, um, I spoke with Matt Abdefar, and I think Mr. Taggart, that you, you're familiar with him, correct? Um, he mentioned during our conversation that he would be calling you. I wonder, did he call you, yes, and did. can you share with us your conversation, if you would, please? Well, we haven't had much of a conversation. He did send me some paperwork, which, you know, doesn't add up to much. He was going to send me maps and stuff, uh -huh. and... 
There were no maps in the paperwork. I got the no folders, maps. no maps at all in the paperwork. But that was one of my questions to him. Right, and he said, and that's what he told me. They had the mapping was going to be done within a day or two, and they would have mailed it out. But that was, oh, probably a week before Christmas, somewhere yeah, in that time frame. It was towards the, not the end, not three days ago, but probably yeah, 10 but days I ago. Yeah, I with him on the 11th, so okay. yeah, he and had said he was going to be calling you yep, within a day did. or two. And he did, and he, was, and he said they were going to get the mapping out and they were going to you know, mail it to me. And what they did mail, I got two packets from them. And it was that exact same thing in both packets. No maps of the No maps, no, no, wow. no. Wow, disappointing on his part. Uh, one other question. Um, the number of Constitution condemnation filings are up to 133, 11 in Franklin, if I'm reading this correct on the court page. Um, has the town board done anything to reach out to these poor souls? I mean, <laughs> the way of support or? They're, they're fighting their uh, resisting an eminent domain, is that what they're? Yes. Yes. No, uh, I have not. Uh, one of our board members' family is involved with it. Um, other than that, I, I have not. You know, you know, I, I think it's their choice. I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm not involved in this. I mean, involved through being town supervisor, but I'm not. You know, they're not my neighbor. They're not going to do it to my, you know, by myself. And I've, you know, the, the compressor station, I think it's really up in the air about that. I'm not sold on it. I'm not, you know, for, for at this time, or I'm not going to be against it at this time. But I don't see where it's going to benefit the town of Franklin. So if it's not going to benefit the town of Franklin, I don't think Franklin should have it. Too rough. There you, go. you know, but... What I'm, I'm saying right now, just with the information I got from, as Donnie said, I, IDA or whatever, you know, that, that doesn't, and they, they told me that if the town board is against it, they normally won't help the companies out. Now, that's what he told me. They haven't gone against the town wishes so far. And uh, so, I mean, that's, you know, we're... I haven't reached out to them. If that's a total question, no, I haven't, Cindy. Have any reached out to the town board members or I no? I was just curious. I haven't curious. heard from anybody about it. Okay. The only one that I know of is, you know, I understand that the Sitz family are, you know, have, are fighting it right now. We're in litigation, I guess. You can ask Garrett. I think that's what it is at this point. But that's the only one I've heard of. I didn't know how many there were. You know, and there's 11 if I'm correct. Um, I'm just, I, I'm concerned for them. Yep. I, I hope that they all have, um, you know, uh, information about eminent domain lawyers, good ones. I'm concerned about them. I hope that they all do. I do have a listing of eminent domain lawyers. If you do hear of anyone, I'd be glad to share that with the board so that they could pass it on to them. Thank you. Thank you. You have spoken yet? Yes, I'm Stefano Bevilacqua. In Chatton, New York, where Millennium put the pipeline in, they were bonded for $250, and they did $1.2 million worth of damage, and they only got $375 with the squeeze of another $125 that they got. So who's going to pick up from $375 to $1.2 million? You mean on road use? Yeah. yeah. That is being looked at right now. It's out there. It's in the Okay. <clears throat> I'm just, if nobody's talked, Gene, that's why I'm looking. I don't know, I understand. Yes, sir. Yeah. Rich Commoda, uh, I live in Franklin, Bissell Road. Um, just, I know there's a lot of research that needs to get done. Um, you know, the town board, probably many of them have jobs. Has the thought been put out there that you form a subcommittee with, led by the board members, with people of the community to together do the research and come up with recommendations? I guess my first answer is no. <laughs> uh, we haven't. Uh, we, have, we have discussed some of it. You know, we're open, open to information. You know, if you have information, we can, we'll look it over. And um, we're gonna go, just go from there. You know, if we, we want more input, I mean, you know, it's a very serious thing. There's no doubt about it. 
and nobody's just looking at it like it's going to go. Um, can I have a follow up? Yes. Um, I don't know if this is appropriate, but it certainly would be advantageous if everybody was coming at this from the same side. I'm sure they're not. You know, and it's a very passionate thing, and that's fine. And number one, I appreciate everybody who's here, the respect for each other. Um, right. You know, I think I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised. I thought it might get out of hand, so I can, I can, I can, I'm serious. You know, I hope I heard it, but I, I appreciate that. That's important for us. Yeah, to respect the other person. I mean, we may not agree, and that's what I said at the last meeting. Absolutely. And unfortunately, I wasn't there. You know, that we have to, you know. We're, we're still neighbors. We're still neighbors. Everybody's got their own opinion. Yes. And um, that's why we have this open forum, so you can speak it. Yeah. Um, if it's not out of line, I'm just curious as to each of the board members, whether they are for or opposed to the Constitution, and then the compressor station, and is it possible to take a uh, roll call or whatever? Is that... Permissible, Mr. Attorney. Well, I don't know that they've made a decision yet. I mean, or, you know, if they're if they've decided, I don't, I don't know if it's fair to put them in that spot yet. There's a lot of science out there on both sides, and I'm not sure that everybody's fully informed and able to make a decision. I can't speak for the individual board members, but um, I, yeah, I, I don't think it's fair to put them on the spot if they haven't decided. That's fine. Yet. I, I just want to bring. Is there a timeline that you have for completing the research? Um, you know, we don't want this thing to linger till after they've been, you know, the compressor station's been here three years and then find out it's no good. So is there a timeline to get all that research done and well, a decision made? Within, within the next six months is what I would hope for. You know, long before it happens, uh, you know, there's, as you said, there's a lot of research coming. This is a new beast they're pro project pro proposing, right? A 30,000 horsepower unit? Yeah. Which, I mean, the 15,000 horse sounds awesome. You know, but, you know, you're doubling that. So, I mean, there's got to be some research on what some of those plants are doing. Yeah. And I, I commend the board for doing a Hancock and, and checking that out. Did the facility know you were coming? Yes. Yes. And, yeah, and because yeah. in some of my reading, I found out when people knew, when the facility knew that people were coming to measure the noise, they dialed it down. Yes. So maybe I suggest you go ad hoc and stand outside and measure the volume. Well, I'll talk to the council. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Me? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to share this picture of myself, if I could get up there. I don't want to give you a copy of it for legal reasons, because the lady I was with has um, been harassed by the gas industry for showing people, much like this gentleman is doing. She's been in court several times already. This is what a compressor station looks like. We walked in. We didn't break in. We walked in around the gate that was not locked. It's not small. It's not quiet. Uh, the Williams Central Compressor Station, which they are now adding five more compressors to it now. Mm -hmm. Not little. It doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. It's not protected. It's, no. <laughs> it's Vera Fest. <laughs> Shirley Ferguson and Franklin. Um, would you say that a noise ordinance is one of the first things that you will address? and try to implement, or have you not decided on that? We haven't decided on it, for one thing. We, as I said, there was three board members and two local individuals that went down to Hancock to that uh, compressor station. And the noise levels that they came back with were 27 outside the building. I understand no. that, but isn't but, the one that's going to be here double it's double the size I mean we've got to, we got to do some as I said that's something that's a new beast out there that has got to have some research done on I don't know whether it's the closest one would be is so it there's no time frame or well as I said well then we you know we got I think we should have at least six months 
to do more research on it before you know uh, somewhat of an answer could be given because we have to find out you know I, I, simplicity on my part is a V8 over a four cylinder car you set two of them side by side and they're new cars and they're both quiet right well new units would they be if one is running at 27 or 28 decimals you know, is that, I mean, as you're right, I think we should go down unannounced. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to go in. You can do the noise levels outside the fence or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you hear something, fine. If you don't, then, you know, maybe it's not as bad. It's a new one. Maybe they've improved, but I don't know. A lot of these you're talking about in Pennsylvania have got some age on them. And whether they're done as well. Our area, our area yeah. all less than four years. So all less than the one, years. The, one, yes. the one in Springville right now is not even a year old. Mm -hmm. Just put it up. Well, with the numbers that were brought back to the town board, everybody that was here last month heard it. You know, the numbers they brought back were not offensive. But I'm not saying a new one couldn't get right. Right. And so that's it, something we got to look into. It does not include the consideration of the blowdowns, which happen sporadically. <laughs> no, totally different that. You're right. picture. Yeah. So she was talking noise levels and noise orders. Yep. So the blowdown wouldn't right, be under that. You also want to do the noise at night time because a lot of times they crank it up at night, not during the day. When well, nobody's available to come, and their blowdowns sound like a 747. They're usually done between midnight and 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sir. Um, my name is Edmund Torino. I come. I live in Franklin. Um, I noticed with the board that you're very careful, that you want to weigh the pros against the cons of a. Uh, of this station coming to Franklin or not. We hear all kinds of things why it would not be such a good idea to have this compressor station here. I wonder what you're weighing, because if you're weighing, there should also be positive reasons to get it here. My question for the board is, what are you weighing, or are we talking about a no-brainer? What, in the most positive, thinkable way that you can look at this uh, compressor station, what is an argument for it? What are you weighing? You know, can you tell me, us, what the potential positive things of this compressor station could be for Franklin? Because then we have something to weigh. Mm -hmm. Excellent question. Great question. Yeah. Well, at this time, I have been trying to get some figures on assessed values. You know, total assessment, which would end up, I mean, should end up as a um, increase in total assessment in the town, which would decrease the uh, tax rate. You know, I mean, this one, this uh, compression station in Hancock is assessed at $12.7 million. And that was the deal between the county and the town and but they pay uh, no taxes pardon they pay no taxes yes they do no maybe they'll start this year they'll start now that's what IDA told me and I've got it in writing right here Gene that they're going to pay eleven thousand dollars in 15 going up to sixty six thousand dollars in like 2030 over a 15 year plan it's I'm not disagreeing with you. That's about a half a million dollars in taxes they'll be paying over 15 years. But they're also going to save half a million dollars. You know, the town's going to lose a half a million. So I'm, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. But... That doesn't sound like benefit, does it? Not the benefit that would, that would satisfy me. No, all right. How's I, mean, it I think, you know, they're an independent company making money. Exactly. So, and so, I have a so, giving them tax breaks. But so again, if if you want to be super positive about this compressor station, mm -hmm. what are the potential benefits? <coughs> Between the ten and twenty percent decrease in taxes. That so that is, that is the that's one thing I, we weigh. I heard are. rumor of that too. That was a figure that's been thrown around. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know either. That's just you're asking me what no. I've heard. That's what I've heard. Now. No, okay, so are we? Are you at ease now? I mean, well, that, that's what I've heard. That I can't give you any. any are there any other? Are there other that. considerations? Other considerations? To why the, the compression well, uh, yeah. station would be good? 
to my knowledge, no. It may have a couple jobs. They're, they do have maintenance people, 24-hour coverage. They may have six or eight people employment. I don't know about that. I'm thinking there should be. If there's, if there's 24-hour coverage, then they have somebody around here that's got to be there. Okay. So you're but basically weighing this potentially positive thing against the other potentially negative. Right. I mean, there's two sides to every story. Okay. 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 Anybody else? Yes, sir. Um, my name is. Um, I don't know where to stand. Let me do this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do a selfie. <laughs> so my name is William Houston. Um, I'm with O2E TV in Binghamton, and I also, for the last four years, I've been working nearly full time. <laughs> Uh, covering the everything re relating to shale gas, pipelines, compressors. I am also an independent researcher and I have a blog and I guess uh, I've been a panelist on pipelines. I've given technical discussions. I've been invited to do that. <coughs> so somebody thinks that I have some kind of expertise. Um, I just want to say that, uh, and I know about a dozen people in this room I would say at least, as far as the noise ordinance, I think it's a really good idea. Uh, I, want, I would invite you to go to Windsor, New York, and, and talk to the people there. They have a noise ordinance in Windsor. It's a good one. Since Williams has been there, when did they build the laser northeast? Four years ago? So when did they build the... They completed it in 2012, so yeah, that was 2012. So, so two, for, two for, for years. four years, Williams has been in compliance zero days <laughs> with the noise ordinance. And in fact, they cannot, unless they put like a big plastic bubble over the facility, which they're not inclined to do, it's actually cheaper. Here's what is cheaper for them. It's a business decision. What they do is they take the landowner that's sick and their kids can't sleep at night and they have headaches and nosebleeds and the noise is driving them crazy. Neurological effects. You can look at the New York Department of Public Service website and you can see reams of complaints from this station. And what they did was they they bought the family out and they made them sign a non-disclosure agreement. And the family left so fast, they left the kid's swing set in the back. facility that this gentleman over here was talking about, I'm going to talk to him later, um, uh, Mr. Don Hebbard. He knows a lot about the Hancock station. I'm very curious how the IDA gained possession of that property because, because Millennium destroyed the foundation of the family that lives there. And it destroyed the septic and the water well. And the same thing. They couldn't fix it. You can't fix it, destroy it. You, blasting. They were blasting the rocks with explosives, and they destroyed this family's house. They made them sign a non-disclosure agreement, and the family left town. Nobody knows always heard from them. They disappeared. They dropped off the face of the planet. So Millennium owned that property. I want to know, how did the IDA get that from Millennium? Let's IDA talk, has the power to buy. Let's talk, let's talk later. I'm going to talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, this, there's two projects coming through this town. The Constitution, supposedly. Um, I think you should do everything in your power to stop it, personally, from what I've seen. But the, the, the permitting authority on both of these projects, it's a, both federal projects, is FERC. FERC, I've been studying FERC. I'm deeply involved in the Constitution pipeline. I'm an intervener. I've been a commenter. I've been following this thing since day one. How many years has it been? Three years? Mm -hmm. Four years, right? We've been following this for four years. And my conclusion is, after being through the process, FERC is a completely rogue agency. They do not follow this nation's laws. They defy court orders. They're presently defying a court order. It's called uh, Delaware River Keepers Network versus FERC. It's from was decided this year. It had to do with seg project segmentation. They are defying a court order. FERC, this is our federal government. This is the permitting authority. They do not follow the law. 
That facility that, that, that Ray here lives a couple of miles from, William Central Station, this station is jurisdictional under the Natural Gas Act. FERC has jurisdiction because it connects to an interstate pipeline. However, it was built with no FERC permit. Why? allowed this facility to be built and they just granted this conditional permit to the Constitution Pipeline which is who's the Constitution Pipeline it's Williams, Williams. Williams. It's, a, it's the same yeah. company it's the same company have it. Williams is violating the law by building these facilities without a permit and FERC is giving them permits Uh -oh. They poison water in our country. The good in pipeline that we don't need. We all together now. We all know the first of Robert's gas machine. It's not for you and me. It's paid by permit fees. We all know the first of Robert's gas machine. It won't protect you. It won't protect me. So, if you think that FERC is going to protect you, please look at the history. The industry does not follow the law. Go to Windsor and you will find that out. Um, you cannot regulate this facility. The only thing you can do, I don't even know if you have any citing authority. I don't think you do. You know, they could use eminent domain here, I think. But maybe this noise ordinance might, if you can increase the cost to this company, they might just find another place for it. Um, 30,000 horsepower is big. This thing, this monster facility, William Central Station, it's on like 40 or 50 acres. I've flown over it like twice, three times. And it's really big and it's really loud and it's really stinky. And they're still expanding it. And this facility is going to be two times bigger than that in horsepower. 100,000 tons per year in emissions. And what's 100,000 tons? I have no conception of that. So I like to come up with an, an analogy. Everybody's seen these trains go by carrying coal. One of those coal hoppers is 100 tons. And it just so happens that a unit train is about 100 of those cars. That's 10,000 tons. A unit train is about a mile long. So we can do some easy math with that. So 100,000 tons is a coal train 10 miles long going into the air here mm, mm, mm. every year. Mm. A coal train mm -hmm. 10 miles long. And I will tell you that it's not just carbon dioxide. It, it, like other people have mentioned here, it's a, it's a host of nasty, like benzene. You, the, the, the safe lim lim limit of benzene into your air is zero well, parts per million. per million. It's a cancer-causing thing. This facility will cause cancers in this area. And as somebody else mentioned, I'm just going to set this down for a minute. The topology here is very hilly. 
the stacks are almost guaranteed to be below the level of the top of the tops of the hills, which means if you live in a valley near this thing, God help you, because you're going to be breathing that crap. A hundred thousand tons. Um, uh, condemnation filings. I'm not an attorney. This is something that maybe you could look into, sir. It is my understanding that FERC has not granted full permitting. There's two entities that have failed to issue the permits. One is the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. They haven't done a wetland survey. And there's about five permits that they're waiting for the, the New York Department of Environmental uh, Conservation, the DEC, also relating to water. FERC, in other words, they don't have the permit yet. They are, it is not timely for them to be doing eminent domain proceedings. They don't, they're, they're not cleared to go yet. My understanding is that you're correct. Yes. I may be wrong, too. 100%. In anyway. your research, did you find that body of case law where individuals had sued FERC and won, or gas companies with FERC approval and won? Have you found those cases? They are. Because it's, I have. It's very, it's very rare. I agree with you there. It's extremely rare, or it's it's unprecedented. But we, you know, my opinion, these pipelines, these compressors, these facilities are going to be permanent. They're going to last 50 years, 100 years. They're going to be here in the ground. It's up to us to figure out a way, but let's stop this stuff. Let's stop these things. Let's figure it out. Even if we have to raise an army. Let's raise an army. Who's with me? Thank you. Thank you. We're going to close the uh, open session and go back to the town board business. We thank you very much. Happy Friday. Thank you. Thank you so much.